What it do, people? What it do? You know what the time it is. It's time to get down and do that thing, right? All right, so we're going to dive in today. We're going to do a little discussion talking to you about maximizing your profits as a creator. Um, yeah, this is a thing that comes up. Like, you know, it's weird, man. Like, you jump into this thing because you absolutely love it. Or you jump into this thing because not wrongly, you think you can make some money, um, which is true if you're doing all the proper things it takes to get to that. Um, I think a lot of people jump into it for the sole purpose of making money. And I won't say that's a good thing or a bad thing. I'm not here to judge, but I definitely think it will take you longer if you come in and that's like your your main, you know, S thing is to come in and you know just like you know make all the money and 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 run with it like that so yeah like it, it take it this stuff right here it takes a little bit of work right and so one of the things that many people get wrong including myself i absolutely hose this in the worst way when i first started is like figuring out your pricing right so one of the most common statements in our industry is, you know, know your worth, right? And that's extremely true. However, you can't go but so far with just that knowledge, right? There's a little bit more to it than just knowing your worth. And I think the other thing that you hear from everybody, um, is oh well you need to come up with a pricing plan strategy and whenever anybody says to me plan and strategy in the same sentence i kind of want to kick them in the pills because they're two exactly different things planning and strategy are not identical they're not the same they don't they don't work the same like it's a whole different like situation and it's funny to me how many people conflate those two together okay so we're going to make sure that we get in here and we talk about some of that all right so let me just do this before we dive in i just want to copy a couple of things right here and then uh yeah i'm just going to click a couple of things and then we're going to get started what's up mr moderation i see you up in here it is good to see you family all right so let's do this um i guess the first thing to figure out is like knowing your service right like what are you doing with your service what are you attempting to gain from your service who are the customers you are trying to attract with this service right like i think that is a huge portion of it i think a lot of people are carting before the horse in this particular situation and like what are you going to do that is of value to someone that they're going to pay you for it that that is a good one like i say all the time right like let's figure out what can you do to help somebody today that they will pay you for yeah that's a good one that's a good one like if if anybody in the chat has any type of thing that they want to add to this particular situation um yeah let's add that like what what can you do to add value to somebody else today that they will pay you for Uh, this is super funny. All right, let's get it. Let's get it. All right, we're, everything's catching itself up. It is taking a couple minutes to catch things up, but it's working. All right, I just wanted to make sure it was working because I was getting like mixed signals from the old YouTube over here, but now I see that it is. It is actually everything is functioning. Okay, Mr. Todd. This is a good question for you, Mr. Todd. What is it today? I mean, what is it that that you do or you provide that somebody will pay you for? I'm curious. Like, what kind of service can you provide that, that does that? That's the first thing to figure out for anybody that's in this creator space, right? 
Um, and I think that's one of the things that people don't really look at because if you watch the majority of the videos on YouTube that are talking about, say, being a full-time creator, they're all talking about, like, YouTube revenues, YouTube AdSense, and things like that. I guess, you know, some people come in and they talk about, you know, the digital products and services that you can do, you know, selling your courses and things like that, and those are all fantastic. Those are exactly what you want to be doing. But a lot of people are starting this creator game as a way of expanding or growing an already business an already business. That's not a word, a business that they already have and they already maintain. They're learning how to maximize YouTube as a marketing vehicle or as a support vehicle. That's one that a lot of people don't think about. Uh, for instance, for Ecamm, for the most part, we use our YouTube channel as a support vehicle, right? There are some marketing on it's funny. Hey, Rich, I can see you right here in the Discord. Hi, Rich. <laughs> He's not in his office today. He's chillaxing at home. Right? Right? Um, what are you what are you talking about, Paul? Oh, the avatar. Got it. Okay. Anyway, so I guess let's talk about that. Um one of the first objectives for you is going to be kind of Again, delineating who are your actual target customers, right? I think most people start the same thing that we all do. We've all been there. We've all done it, so no one's cursing you out for it. A lot of people start their target customers. They think their target customer is everybody, and that's not the case. So the first goal is going to be to do some market research, right? And let's see. I'm, I'm pick on somebody here. Uh Mr. Camera Junkie's in. He's in the building, right? So a little bit ago, it's been about a year. It's strange how fast the time just like flipped. It's actually over a year now that I think about it. Um, a little bit more than a year ago, he decided that he wanted to do some editing as a service. Uh, people, you talk about a wide open market that you can teach yourself in about two weeks how to get a video done. Now, you won't know how to edit the way, say, I know how to edit or, you know, some of the Broccoli Squad guys know how to edit in, in about a week or so. But you'll know how to put out a video. Um, and so many creators are looking for editors. So if you're still sitting around trying to figure out what to do, family, that's the one. That is the one. And it's something that you can do that doesn't require you to put a lot of effort out there. Um, Rich says, I'm having internet issues. I don't know because there is a massive storm going on outside, but everything looks good here. But since you say that, I will put on my bandwidth and statistics and make sure it's going. Okay. Uh, everything looks okay right here, but we'll hope. We'll, all right, let's cross fingers. Actually, we're still having problems with the wind is so strong that power lines are like dropping. So. If I cut off, it's because we have crazy winds, like hurricane force winds in the winter, which is unheard of for us. Okay, so um, that is still a massive one, right? That is an absolutely massive one. As a matter of fact, I was in doing some curating comments in the Ecamm community just before I started this, and there are legit people in there still looking for editors, like right now. To, as we speak <laughs> like so it's it's kind of funny but it is definitely a thing let me mute the discord so that i can hear it but you guys can't hear it just in case paul starts saying you know swear words and whatnot okay so um that's a that's a fantastic one the market research i, I mean i can give you the basics because i haven't actively looked for it i just hear it constantly as a creator when i go to shows when I go to like podcast movement or, you know, some of these other video shows, people of video, um, content marketing world, social media marketing world, all I ever hear from creators is I got so much more I want to create. Like I specialize in doing this particular thing, but I hate editing videos. So if you take somebody who is, I'll use Stephanie, she's a NLP coach and NLP practitioner teaching people how to use NLP for their business, right? Like she's super solid at that, but she may absolutely cannot stand editing. So she's not editing her videos. She's going to pay someone to edit her videos, right? Um, she, um, um, not that you don't use that word. Um, Rich is in the chat and he has somebody that he uses to help cut, you know, 
videos, right? So there's tons. There's legit tons. I was literally just in, like I said, in the ecom community, and I saw someone in there, and they're like, yo, I need an editor fast. Like, who can help me? So that's an easy one. That's an easy one, especially for creators who are trying to figure out, you know, like what the heck is, is going down, right? Um, yes, Speedify is on. So it's not, I don't think that's Speedify. Are you guys, anybody seeing internet issues besides Rich? My bandwidth monitor says everything is legit, but we'll see. Anyway, um, since I do some freelance podcast editing and I use what I learned to help local labor users upgrade their tech. All of this running through my business very, very media. Love it. Love it. See, there you go. Right. So now I, using Todd's, you know, ex example, right. As, as a business and you're doing your thing, like you got to figure out like how you're going to price your stuff. And I swear to you once a week, at least once a week, sometimes more, I get a call from somebody in the drop squad. Hey man, I'm about to do this. I need to know how to price it. <laughs> so after I fielded three of those calls this week, I'm like, yo, I think I better re re glance on top of this subject. So anyway, your first one is going to be market research. Like what will the market bear? And then after you've done your market research, you got to sort of understand in the process of that marketing research, what are other people in your field charging to do the service that you're attempting to do, right? Like what are people charging to do what it is that you do. <laughs> Freaking rich. I love you, bro. <laughs> anyway, so, and then knowing that, going back to what we talked about, about your, your um, knowing your customer avatar, knowing wh who your direct customers are, you'll also then get to know what your audience is willing to pay for the type of service that you're doing. Okay? So, once you have that figured out, now you're ready to get to the good part. You got to decide what your pricing model is going to be. Now, there's three major pricing models, right? There is the day rate, the hourly rate, and then there is sort of what's known as the output rate, right? Um, I tend to do a lot of my freelance work based on fixed rates or output rates. So what does that mean? If someone says to me, Hey, I need you to come and shoot this video and edit this video. Uh, what is, what is it going to cost me? I've done this long enough that I know that hourly rates here are problematic and why why is it problematic here but say not necessarily problematic for say rich in dallas because i live in the tropics and if i do an hourly rate and we go somewhere and all of a sudden what's happening right now is happening um there's literally 40 mile an hour winds cranking for like two hours solid then they just stop that pushes the entire job back and you can't do anything. The client can't do anything. Everybody's just sitting out there like twirling their thumbs. Clients don't like to feel like they have to pay for when the weather does something dumb. Where I live, the weather always does something dumb. So because they have to deal with it, you have to deal with it. They expect that that's just the cost of doing business. And depends on your relationship with the clients. I tell certain clients that, <laughs> hey, Greg, I tell certain clients that, yeah, we're, we'll adjust according to the weather. And then other clients, I'm like, no, because of that, I'm going to do a day rate. So it's going to be, you know, $2,000 for the day, period. And if it gets, you know, rain, snow, shine, whatever, it's $2,000 for the day. Because if I got to be out here standing at the whim of the weather with you, I got to be able to make up for the client work I couldn't do sitting in my office, you know, while I was, you know, man of my business. Right. So if you if you're willing to ask that to come out, then you got to be willing to take the whole thing. So certain clients like that. Other clients, I have a longstanding relationship with them. I understand, 
you know, them, they understand me. Like, we do things. Sometimes I go above and beyond. Sometimes they pay more. Sometimes, you know, they have a lower budget, and they ask me to still cover it. And I say, yeah, because I like working with them. And those ones, I have a, a thought process in my head. I'm willing to take the the hit on this particular project because I know there'll be two more banging ones right after. So in those particular people, I'm not going to charge them a whole day rate. I'm going to kind of charge them based on a, a fixed rate or an output because I know that they're going to constantly bring. So you got to be, you got to have a couple different pricing models in your head, right? And then, so let's discuss hourly rate and let's discuss the positive and negatives of an hourly rate. Um, Right, there you go. <laughs> Rich has got the first position of what I was going to talk about is that that hourly rate, right? Hey, uh, what's up, Mr. Richie? I'm glad Renee is here because Renee will work totally in this conversation. A lot of creators, and you can tell, just comb through the Facebook group, screw themselves when it comes to hourly rate. So let's let's go back to this editing situation. We're talking to Louise and you know we're talking about editing video. And say, you know, for for ease of use, I'm gonna set these numbers at $100 an hour always. Do not take that as a market rate. I'm just using it for the math, right? So he sets an hourly rate of six hundred dollars based on the client's expectation that it takes six hours to finish this video. And let's say he's starting out with a 2019 Core 9, you know, um, with, uh, let's say, 16 gigs, whatever, right? So he gets in there. He starts cutting. It's an old Intel. It takes him eight hours. He already told them six. So in the beginning, he might lose a little bit of possible money, but and still he's winning because he still got a $600 gig. So you go out, and this is where most creators F themselves. They'll go out, and they'll do like 10 of those $600 gigs. In most cases, they went like eight hours because of their equipment, but they made like six grand. Okay? What many creators don't do is have the comment, boom, a lot since, to go and take two out of that and go buy yourself an M2 <laughs> or M1 um, Mac Studio, 1999, base level, will run circles around the old Intel because in their head, it's $2,000. But now that same video that his $600 videos are averaging eight hours, so he's actually coming under, he can cut that in like three, four hours because the machine is stupid quick, right? So now... Every one of those videos, he's coming out 200 positive because he had the common sense to upgrade his equipment. I can't tell you the amount of people that be in the comments talking about how this stream blew up and it was because they had an echo. It wasn't an echo. It was double audio. Or because, you know, the, the internet went dumb and they're complaining that that stream cost them money and they're charging like $1,000 to do this stream. And they do these streams all the time. But today, this particular program that I might work for just caused them to lose money. And I'm like, what are you running? Oh, I'm 2015 um, MacBook Pro. I'm like, if you're charging $1,000 a stream, why are you still running an eight-year-old computer? Like, seriously. So... The one disadvantage to hourly rate, like Rich said, if you don't take time to upgrade your skills so that you operate faster and upgrade your equipment so that you operate faster, you will always be chasing the dragon. It's it's not going to work. But if you yourself is getting faster because your skill is picking up and you're smart enough to invest in equipment that will make you operate faster, you will be Amaze balls, and then the, now what you're doing is you're actually earning more because what used to be a six hour edit you can get done in two now because your skill got better. So his equipment got him down to three, and then his skill got him down to two. Right on average, I can cut a $600 video in less than two hours. You know what I'm saying now. This, Greg, come on, player. 
this is super important. You always have to, let me explain the way Greg is saying this, right? That's why I like to do output pricing because I can charge anywhere from 10 to 100% extra for output pricing. So for instance, like I said, I could cut your average six hour video in like two hours. Why? My equipment's fast as F. Me too, I've been editing for over 30 years so I can fly through edits. Like my hands is quick. I'm like, I'm with Matt, I chop broccoli, right? So I can tell a customer that what would normally take your traditional editors, editors say 20 hours to do this job, I can do it in 10 but I charge more. Oh, why? Because I'm quick, right? Um, the uh, dopest running back in the league gets paid more than the crappy one is what it is, right? Because I can get your project back to you faster. If you want to pick a slow person, I'll hook you up with them, but I'll do it quicker, right? Well, then why don't you charge by hourly? Because I just don't. I don't, right? Like I do certain things at hourly, but many of the things I'm going to do at an output rate. So you know good and damn well. I'll give you a prime example. Yesterday, when is, when is yesterday? Uh, no, it wasn't yesterday. It was the 10th. Okay, that was yesterday. <laughs> God. Uh, Chat GPT Plus came out. Why? Because if you pay 20 bucks, you get your Chat GPT faster. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, you got to, you know, sometimes pay. And like Greg said, always be conservative with your time, too. If you say, if you think it's a six-hour job, tell your client it's 10, deliver it in five. Yo, now surprise and delight, as we call it in the Apple world, right? And then there you go. Uh, it's probably just you. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Right, there you go. No more proxy files. That automatically speed up your time, right? Uh, no background rendering, like all of the stuff. Like people just don't get it. Seriously, a, a, a $800 Mac mini as a cutting machine. Like you could start a editing for professional video for people with basically $1,000 right now. You can start that business for $1,000 and make that exact same $1,000 within the first two weeks you start the business. So before the bill comes legit like absolutely legit and so after the first month everything is profit but you know people is hard hit now here's a here's a key note before i before i get um get too farther be interested in how much you think it costs to gain their black belt well <laughs> let's see um Karen has been at it for five years, and I think it's roughly around 200 a month for five years. Now, the rate here might be different from the rate where you are. Also, I don't know if karate is more expensive than TKD, like how fast it takes to get a belt in TKD, but she's at Brown Belt after a little over five years at probably two, somewhere between two and 300 a month. I don't know. I don't ask her. But uh, it's a lot, right? It's not as cheap as people would think. Um, so, in the pro if you're going to do hourly, you got to be willing to always upgrade. Actually, to upgrade your equipment, to upgrade your skills goes across the board. But for hourly, got to be careful and don't set yourself up for failure. Always give yourself a cushion. And like seriously, man, I don't know how to say this any. I don't know how to say this any better, right? Be willing to say freaking no. <laughs> okay. Let's let's wait. This one requires a graphic. This one requires a graphic, right? The most important thing that you learn in this entire process is, is this word right here. Let's go ahead and throw this one on the screen. Boom. Learn how to say no. Do not get hostage to your fear of losing the client. The, the minute they think, and no, it shouldn't be. It should be equanimous, equanim, equanimous, whatever. It should be equal. <laughs> um, but don't get yourself in a position where if I don't take this, I'm going to lose a client. Um, had a conversation this week with one of our Drop Squad members, and 
this person was a little bit scared of what they wanted to ask for their hourly rate. And I'm like, cool, here's what you do, right? Let's take your hourly rate. We're going to add $5 an hour to it. We're going to put it in a bucket. So you, they buy in a 40, right? So now they're not buying you by the hour. They're going to buy a 40, right? How many ounces of your time is in that 40? 40. Any more? Nope. Any less? Nope. So if I get to the end of this 40 and I don't have, I'm not finished. I ain't got my fade yet. I need a little bit more. Sometimes I'm out with rich and we drinking and we eating. It's going to take more than 140 to get a little sliz because I just had a big ass barbecue. Right now, if I'm on an empty stomach, yo, that first 40, I'm like, Oh, what's up, ma? What's your name is? Right? So, at the end, you just go back to the client and was like, hey, you had a lot more work estimated than you thought. Your 40 is almost up. Would you like another 40? Yes, because they're enjoying what you're doing. Have the confidence in to just sell a bucket, right? Sell a bucket. It's the easiest way to do hourly. That way you kind of know what you're getting. You kind of know what your salary is going to be per se. Um, but your client, if they start enjoying what you're doing, they can just buy more hours in the bucket. Like lawyers been doing this joint forever. Contractors, like handy people, like they've been doing this joint forever. Maintenance folks, yep, forever. So you can do it that way as well. Okay, so we covered hourly kind of like ad nauseum, right? Um, let me just check on you guys to see where we're at. I want to get to, I don't really like hourly. Let's be honest. I can't really stand hourly, but I do it for the things that work. Hourly equals utility delivery rules. Uh, it equals value. <laughs> Don't be a two. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Dude, right? Dylan is crushing, 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 crushing. Dylan is killing it. Um, if the two Dylans are killing it, you got to find both of the Dylans. You got to find DB, Dylan Bates, and you got to find Dylan John. The, I, I, they should just do a video of the Dylans, <laughs> Dylans versus Dylans or something. Uh, but yeah, they're both amazing. And especially you guys need to step up your notion game. So make sure you follow this handsome young fellow over here. He's doing amazing things with teaching you folks about notion and final cut. Anyway, uh, say 10, do it in five. <laughs> there you go. There it is. Uh, do I have a, no, I thank you. Uh, dang it. Come on. Click. Dang it. Sorry. My uh, clicker's not working. There you go. I did it. I did it. Just a brief video. But um, here's what you need to know. As of now, where we stand today, like today, February the 11th, uh, the 2023rd, whatever, your M1 and your M2 are pretty close to the same. At least if we're talking pro and max, they're pretty close to the same. Where you're going to notice the difference is probably sometime in around April, May, maybe June, after Final Cut has been updated to fully flex what an M2 can do, after, you know, the Adobe Suite flexes to what, you know, the M2 can do and stop crashing. Sorry, Premiere people. I had to take that shot. <laughs> um, the apps haven't caught up to the M2 yet. So all of the idiots out here making reviews about, well, the M2 is not much faster than the M1. It never is when it first comes out. You're dingling. They have to, people have to rewrite their apps in order to take advantage of that. And yes, Apple made the machine. And yes, they could have had Final Cut ready, but they didn't. When they do, you'll know. You'll be like, good low. Oh my God, that's fast. So we, we haven't had a major tick Final Cut upgrade since the M1 Max. Um, yeah, I think Final Cut barely is taking full advantage of Ultra yet. The next Final Cup upgrade will smoke Ultras and will smoke uh, M2s, and so then the difference will make a difference. If all you're doing is streaming with Ecamm, it's worth it, absolutely. But do you need to go from M1 to M2? No. Do you need to go from Intel to M2? Absolutely. If you never bought an M1 or you bought the original M1, say Mac Mini, and you just want to get an M2 because it has faster, more ports, more displays, that's worth the upgrade. Everything after that, sit. Just sit and wait. But uh, yeah, if you got money, just do it. <laughs> like, you know, I'll upgrade my joints every two years, no matter what. I never hold a machine longer than two years. How much does it cost in money or the expensive pain and effort at Eagles? Oh, come on, play it. 
Come on, player. Say it again for the people in the back. The last thing in Renee's statement right here is your ego suppression. So there it is. 40 pounds a month is $80 roughly. So yeah, around the same. Uh, <laughs> you got to know when to let the no flow. See, Renee tried to put me on the lyrics. Yo, Miss Dina came in here with the lyrics, yo. You got to know when, you gotta know when to let the no flow. Gangster. Love it. All right. Um, so here, here it is, right? You, I, I, I want to get off the hourly rate thing because I think a lot of people get trapped in that situation. Um, I think day rates are really cool depending on what you're doing, right? Photography type stuff, you can do a day rate. Uh, coding, not so much. Coding, you kind of want to go on an output rate, right? You're going to go according to your code. So this is where your market research comes in. You're going to know what your people want. So anyway, in conversation with our friend this week, I was like, listen, here's what you're going to do <laughs> to get yourself in the door, right? But do not do what I have done so many times in the past. Do not screw yourself by trying to get yourself in the door with a $10 fish hook. All right, wait. I don't know how to explain this, but I'm going to explain this in the simplest way possible. Um, dang, I just set myself up. <laughs> All right, so let's suppose... You're going to use this as a bait, right? Let's call this $10. This is a bait. What is this $10 bait going to catch, right? $10 bait is going to catch a $100 fish. Guess what eats $100 fishes? $1,000 fishes, <laughs> right? So, like, don't set yourself up on $10 bait and think that you're gonna catch thousand dollar fishes. Doesn't work. So I told our friend, I was like, no, you do not get to come in at like 10, 15. You need to set your price at 20 and then set it at 25. And then when they say 25 is too much, you can go back to 23. And they say, nope, nigga, okay, 20, that's all I got. And then they're like, all right, I'll take the 20. Boom, you was there in the first place. But if you say 20, you know what they're going to say? How about 15? And you're going to be like, how about kiss? Never mind. <laughs> right? So you are you already would have been cheated if you did it wrong. So have the cojones to come up in there and be like, yo, these webbles say I need you to pay me 25. I normally charge clients like you 35, but I really like your company. I, I like the value that you stand for. I like the, the product. I like the team. Like, I feel it will be easier to work with you, so I'm willing to give you the discounted rate of 25. In the back of your mind, you're going, I would have done this for 15. Right? So that works. And you know what? They didn't even blink. Where he was afraid of, uh-oh, I already helped thin the pack by saying he. Um, uh, what they were afraid of is that that 25 was going to scare the client. And I'm like, if they did scare the client, you ain't want them know how. You ain't want them. So be willing to let that go, right? Be willing to let that go. And, and yeah, just... I don't like to know what you were thinking. It's too plain. It is a very true statement, but it's too plain. It does require some things. So I'll give you in a second how I came up with my hourly weight, and then we can move from there. Um, if you're hitting the actual performance limits of an M1, like you can't render fast enough to uh, uh, round trip a client during a five-minute call window, or you need 96 gigs of RAM for 3D. There you go. That's a good reason to upgrade. If you're already hitting the limits of M1, um, it was 40, negative, good, good Lord, <laughs> negative 42. Yo, when it gets to 65, like today because of the wind, <laughs> your man's is in a jacket. Like, good day. Holy crap. Oh, girl, I got something for you in just a second, so hang tight. I'm going to tell you this in just a second. All right, yo, love this avatar. This avatar is dope. That was exactly me about circa 74 reading encyclopedias is I used to have the 
in the back of <laughs> right in the back of my head. <laughs> like that's where it was. Um, right. Mighty diamonds. Big fish eat the small fishes just to get them belly full. Right. Uh <laughs> how about how much it was just one rib, Luis. How much for one rib? I give you 35 cents. I mean, come on now. Come on now. Let's get it together. Uh Gotta, gotta see pics of that. Okay, I will dig one up, man. I'm gonna dig one up for you, right? All right. Anyway, so now, now that we kind of come to this understanding, right? And we got, and again, I'm talking to creators who do things for a service. But even if, even if, and and Dylan can attest to this, yo. People hit us up all the time and it's like, yo, I would uh, pay you $200 to do the sponsor video and then you get to keep the product. I'm like, the product is 50 bucks, player. What you want? Right? I'm not making you no video for 200 bones. None whatsoever. Not doing it. Now, maybe, now I don't even want to say maybe. Maybe if the product had a following of, say, like 20 million deep, and they were going to put you in the advertisement and put it on their socials and showed you that they were going to run like a month long campaign. Oh, in that particular case, it would be worth it. Right. But like they probably not going to do that because companies that can do that do not try to give you 250 bucks for a video. Like, no, just absolutely no. <laughs> just no. I wouldn't say no. Um, uh, let's see. Hold on. I just wanted to find a, a picture because this was a common situation, right? People like to come up and say, well, if you do this particular video for you, for me, I will pay you an exposure. And what I like to tell them is... I'm a retired military paramedic. You would assume that in battle, we send the most people home because of bullet wounds or uh, scrapnel or whatever. We send people home because of exposure, <laughs> right? Like exposure is fatal, like either too cold and frostbite or too hot and like heat stroke. Yeah. People get, sick and die from exposure out your exposure ain't no good to me so never do stuff for stuff like that like don't let your ego greg said it way back in the, in the top back there in the chat don't let your oh don't let your um ego write checks for you just don't it's not going to help you don't do it like it, that gets old real quick you find yourself starting to hate what you're doing now here's coming to here's where i start fights if you know any creators that like to whine about this, you can tell them I'm happy to fight with them because I will fight. I will go toe to toe with people. There is so much freaking conversation about creator burnout. And I'm telling you, there's no such freaking thing. Is there such thing as burnout burnout? Absolutely. Creator burnout? No. Why? What they did was they took on a sponsor. Let's pick Elgato. They took on a sponsor. Elgato said, I will give you one of everything that Corsair and I make, and you will create 10 videos for us, and we're going to pay you uh, $1,000 a piece for those videos. You get four videos in. You started not to feel the process. They start telling you, uh, can you reshoot this, or can you do that, or can you say this, or... Um, Dylan, you were too hyper in this video. We need you to calm down. <laughs> or Dylan, you're not hyper enough in this video. Can you put a little bit more sauce? Blah, blah, blah. And after 20 edits for each video and that person on the product team that's always in your ear telling you to reshoot this, re-say that, re-edit this, whatever, now you're starting to get pissed because you realize you're doing $4,000 videos for each of these freaking $150 products. So they gave you a box of $150 price. The most expensive thing they sell right now is like $300. So we go $300, work it all the way down to the cheapest thing they sell, which is like $50. They gave you a box of like 20 products. And let's say that whole entire box, according to Best Buy, is worth $750. Oh, let's make it easy. Let's make it $1,000. That whole box is worth $1,000 of stuff. And then you're going to make 10 videos. for So you're thinking you're getting $1,100 worth of game. First of all, 
this cost 150, it actual like Alibaba standards cost about 40 bucks. So the product that ain't got nothing to do with your paycheck, right? Uh, monogram, don't listen to me. If you're willing to send me a monogram deck, that I will, I will, I will do things that are illicit. <laughs> monogram decks are, are sick, but creator burnout comes from creators who chase the particular bag, and some of that bag is based on their mother ego, and then they got in the middle of it, and it won't no good. Okay, what does this look like in college? Right? Oh, dang it, Doc, stop doing that. In college, you went way over backwards to try to, like, you know, link up with Becky because, you know, she was cute. You thought she was popular and all this other stuff. And then after about five minutes at dinner, you're like, yo, there is absolutely zero substance, but you done set yourself up. You done told everybody that you was fitting to go date so-and-so, and then you went out and you're like, man, I would have been better off to just stay at home and and watch movies with my friend Luis, <laughs> right? So everybody done did it. Everybody done went after somebody that, you know, was the popular person or whatever you told everybody. And then when you got with them, you didn't realize you didn't really want to be with them, but you had already set yourself up. So now you got to walk around and get the badge. Typical high school, college move happened all over time. So don't do it when you're grown folks. Like if you're not, at least watch an 80s rom-com to remind you this is not the look, okay? Watch Mean Girls or something to remind you this is not the look. Do not get caught up chasing the bag. I'm not talking to you, Monogram. Please get at your boy. <laughs> but um, yeah, don't chase a bag unless you really like the product like that. Right. There are certain products I would do that for all day because I feel the value in the product is so dope. Right. This is a product I would have done free videos for. Why? The value of this product is dope. And it's not even because of the equipment. It's because for the creators that I would teach about this particular product or everything else that they make is so high that I am still on my purpose of helping people create content to tell their stories, to expand their business, to gain that know, like, and trust in order for them to go help other people, right? I help people that help people. So if it's a 360 said, we don't got the budget to pay you, but we'll send you a bunch of these and you just teach creators how to create. I wait with this because this product, I will stand behind. I will stamp my name on this bad boy, right? This is legit. If they made a purple LGL version of this, this Insta360, call your mans, <laughs> right? I would back these guys up. This product is that dope, right? My Sony cameras, yes, same thing. I would back them up because they're so dope. I know that if you had it in your hand, you would get to where you're going to get. It matches my value proposition. It matches my purpose, and it matches my intentions. So I can take those, but trust me, I get an email every day from somebody asking me to like take on a product or present something. Man, I got one the other day. Here's a $29 USB microphone that I, no, no, don't come at me. Especially when you try to be like, oh, and if you buy it from Amazon first, we'll pay you back. Those are scams. F those. Anyway, so let's get, let me get off that soapbox because I can go for days about, about sponsors coming up and asking people stuff. Um, I'm not going to shout him out. One of our homies, <laughs> Dylan will tell you, one of our homies got an email from a prospective uh, sponsor the other day, said uh, we we paid 25 bucks for sponsored videos. There is nobody in our particular Discord group that is anywhere near that price, not even close. Like, we, I couldn't get you a cup of coffee for 25 bones in that group. I'm sorry. That's just anyway. Let me get off of that. All right. So, I I now here's here's we're gonna go back. I think Greg might have mentioned this or uh, Renee. Get yourself in the position to where. Let's say you take on this project, right? So I'm gonna go and and help out um, this particular company do their thing, and say we came to this twenty five dollar price that my my friend came to. And then they're, they're hustling, like they're banging it out. And they crushed those 40 hours in 30 hours. You know what they got? They got 10 hours to do something else. But the client, you're finished with them. 
right? You can say, hey, I did your work early. Here it goes. And then you do another one. They get another $40 bucket. You do it in 20 hours. You hand them the deliverables way early. Now you're going to say, listen, I like working with you. You like working with me. Everything you give me, I crush it under um, deadline. This, I'm about to up my rates to my other clients to 50 an hour. Um, I think for you and I, uh, can we go to 35? And they say, no. All right, listen, I will keep it where we are, but I'm going to need you to bring me a referral. What? Yes, I've done it. Completely done it. Yes, I will do it for you at this price. I will stay inside your budget, but I need you to help me. I need you to bring me a referral. Family, they will do it because they don't want to pay more. You know how I know they'll do it? Because we pay you 30% to bring other users to Ecamm. We pay you 40% to bring other users to Ecamm if you sold 50 copies. Why do we do that? That's how it works, player. That's why everybody asks you to do some affiliate marketing, so to speak. You know what I mean? Yo, I feel like reporter stores should be paying me and Tom Buck because I guarantee you we sold every piece that they sold to the United States in the last couple of months. <laughs> the last year or so, like seriously, right? Um, yeah, it's it's kind of funny. They should definitely, they should listen to me. Um, if they don't soon, Matthew, I'm going to just go to visit my friends. And now that I can get in, now that they opened the border back up, I'm going to just go over there and make my own and they're going to be mad at me but I ain't playing with these kids out in the streets. So yes, be willing to adjust according to the market. The other thing, be absolutely cool with it. I just want to reiterate this in case we missed it, in case somebody rolled in late, be willing to be like, no, not today, Carol, not doing it. It's very important you do that. Okay, so now, how can you get better at this? You need to learn estimating, right? You really need to learn estimating. Um, Again, the more product you do, the more videos you do, the more content you create. Some I mean, you're just writing articles, right? The faster you get at those things, you can adjust your estimates, right? Always give yourself space. Give yourself at least 20, 25% more space. If you think a video you can do it in eight hours, tell them it's 10. Tell them it's 10. Give yourself space and never miss a deadline. If they want you to do it in three days, tell them it takes seven. And they say, no, I need you to do it in three days. You say, sorry, the minimum I can do is five. And they still want you. And then you do it in three days. Just be like, look, I know you wanted it in three. I, I didn't sleep. Like, I hustled you this one. You just set the thing. But at Apple, to this day, you roll into Apple it takes three to five days to do a repair. You don't know what's broken. It doesn't matter. It's three to five days to do a repair. Some of those repairs we knock out in 20 minutes. And we do the paperwork. And then we do the testing. And then we call the customer back and be like, oh, your machine is ready. Come and get it. They're like, oh, I thought you said it was going to take seven days. Yeah, we had the part in stock. Or another genius came in early and they had the opportunity to work on it. So we got you through because we knew how important it was for you. Surprise and delight. Anybody in here that's ever worked in a fruit farm, Aubrey, uh, Matthew, uh, uh, Brady, if you're around, surprise and delight. That's what we do. We tell customers something that we can fix while they go to Starbucks. We tell them five to seven days because you don't want to say you could do it in an hour. And all of a sudden you open it up and you find an additional problem and it can't be done. That's problematic. And that that pisses people off. So it's better to just come in high. So learn your estimates. Give yourself space. Remember this. Now, Here's something else you need to know. If you, okay, how, how do you how do you deal with a tool, right? So Jasper, 100 bucks a month, right? But Jasper allows you to crank out more content, right? When you are writing something for somebody and you're, you know, using Jasper to help yourself out or whatever, you got to remember, think of it like food costs. Every restaurant you go to, I don't care where it is unless the restaurant is really failing, their food cost is somewhere between 18 and 22%. That's what you're taught in school, right? If your food cost is higher than 18 to 22%, Gordon Ramsay will come to your place and curse you to freak out on live TV. 
because food costs is 18. So every restaurant you go to, food costs is 18 to 20%. So what does that mean? If your job is to grow avocados and you can sell those avocados for a dollar a piece, then the next person is Aubrey. Aubrey makes amazing uh, guacamole. And in each one of her buckets of guacamole, she uses three avocados, right? Aubrey's avocado guacamole with three avocados doesn't cost $3. It costs $10 because she triples the price of what she paid for the avocados. You should at least double it. So if you're buying something and using that something to get you to the next point, then you need to double up for that. Okay. Key element, write this down. Every freaking invoice. Every invoice, I do not care how small. You need to peel 10, 20% and pretend you never got it. If you get paid $1,000 to do something, you only got paid 800. What do you do with the last 200, doc? That's how you replace your machines, people. That's how you pay for Final Cut. That's how when Dylan comes on and says that M Motion VFX just dropped MTuber 3 at 99 bucks, you should buy it. You should never come into any chat that I'm in and be like, 99 bucks for a plugin, that's so expensive. I kind of almost delete you from my brain when you say that. I'm here to teach you, so I'm not going to do it, but that's what I want to do. I'll be honest. I'm an honest cat. I want to delete you from my brain when you say that, because that means you're not putting enough faith in yourself to invest in yourself. And the way you do that, even if you just started, if, if something's going to cost you 99 bucks, this plug M2 or two is a good plugin, right? I don't even know if that's the right price. I should probably use the real answer before I get Dylan in trouble. <laughs> um, actually, you can make almost everything that's in MTuber 2 in motion. My guess is they made it in motion, but you don't know how to use motion. So therefore you got to buy the plugin. <laughs> Just say it. Just say it. Uh, Final Cut Pro plugins, uh, MTuber 2, where you're at. MTuber 3. Let's use that one. That's the newest one. Hey, no, shh, shh. It's 109 bucks. Oh, they even raised the price. You see what I'm saying? They adjusted according to the market. These guys used to be like 99 bucks, but now it's 109. And they put Peter's face on it. That's why it costs more. Anyway, so here's a plugin. It's a hundred and ten dollar plugin. And look, there's the other Dylan right there. That's why they charge extra. They put that fool's face on here. Anyway, so knowing this, right? When you cut a video for somebody, you need to peel. So if you did a hundred, uh, say a six hundred dollar video. Sorry, back to where we were. You need to peel. 60 to 120 bucks out of that video and put it in a bucket that you do not F with. Put it in the F it bucket, the bucket. So that way, when something comes up like this, you can just get it. You don't even think, right? So people say all the time, right? People say all the time, hey, Doc, Apple's dropping a brand new machine. Are you going to get it? Yes. Oh, you must be rich. No. Why? Because I put a way to get the new stuff when it comes in. All of the guys that are creating tutorial videos or creating, um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Review videos that are always buying the latest and greatest equipment. They budgeted for that. That's how. And go back to where Richie said, also make sure you got your tax together. You know, put. Your, I don't want to get into that because then I got to start doing, uh, what's those words? I got to start doing disclaimers. I ain't trying to do that. But yes. I always say this. This cracks me up. I, I've told this story to the Drop Squad before. Some of you guys might understand, might have heard me say this before. I, I, I swear to you, I had a client come to us in the Apple Store cursing me out, calling me names that aren't nice. Some of them was borderline racist and was like, because I was fixing their machine and I was taking too long to fix their machine and they were losing, what do you say, $60,000 a day every day that we had this machine and we had this machine for like three of the seven days, literally came in twice a day, the whole three days cursing us out. And I was fixing a white plastic MacBook. <laughs> okay. We're talking the 1299 machine. I'm like, bro, at the end, I almost got fired for saying this, but I was like, if I was making 60,000 a day, first of all, I wouldn't have one machine. I'd have three. Second of all, 
if that's what you're losing, you can walk right over there right now, buy a brand spanking new one, go home, do your work. I will transfer the stuff for you in 20 minutes. You can go home, do your dang thing, and then come back and get your machine when it's done and return the one you just bought. We have an open return policy, 14 days, no question asked. We do not care. So I don't know why you didn't do that on the first day. So I don't know, but I'm just saying. So when you, if, and my thing was that I said to him, I'm like, if Jeff Gordon hits the wall, Jeff Gordon walks into the, the garage, if he's still walking, and gets into another $2 million Malibu and takes off, right? When when the Raiders crushed Drew Bledsoe, uh, Dick Belichick leaned over and said, okay, Brian Greasy, your turn. Brian Greasy came out, broke his ass. Then they said, oh, you only got the last dude left. Thomas Brady, here, your turn. I wish we hadn't have done that. <laughs> Oh, my God. That's what we get for just wanting to kill quarterbacks. We unleashed the monster. Uh, all because we had every intention on breaking Drew Bledsoe and then breaking Brian Greasy. By the time we get to the third string guy, there's no way he's going to F us with a fake fumble. Anyway, so you got to have these contingencies in place, right? you got to have these contingencies in place. And this is how you set yourself up for success. Okay, now... The last thing that I want to talk to you about pricing about is how I came up to a general rule. This is just a general rule, okay? I stated that if I mean, I, I should have had I should have done this math already, but I did it. Let's say your goal is to make uh, fifty thousand. All right, let me do this in there. Your goal is to make 50000 for the year, okay? You want to divide that by 2180, all right? That means that you got to be at $22 an hour, right? You can just go look up a, a hourly salary to hourly calculator. It's probably more accurate than the way I did it, <laughs> but... I think that was the math that we used to use back in the day. So here, let's just use one of these. This about makes some sense. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's say your goal is to make 50. All right, and we want to base this off a 40 hour week and you don't want to do 50, well, you need some vacation. So we give you two weeks off, right? You hit the calculation and then I was close, right? They rough, they rough, they rough demated it. But I was close. That means that in order for you to maintain a fifty thousand dollar year uh, salary for your side helpful, that means you be you need to be profiting about um, forty two hundred a month. That's a thousand dollars a week ish, and then that's be ninety two percent. Never mind the median salary. So it's roughly twenty five dollars an hour. So to my friend who I helped come up with this pricing. His his extra business can literally net him fifty two a year if he stays flush the whole way through, right? So let's uh, eighty six this and go one hundred and do the same thing. Calculate it. Boom! You need to make fifty bones an hour. You see what I'm saying? And so when you know this. This will give you what you can. Come to this thought. Have this in your head. Even if you don't get to the 100. All right, first of all, let us ooh, let me come back here real quick. Y'all need to see my whole head for this. If your goal is to make 50, set your pricing at 100. So that way when you F up and only do 50%, you made it. But what if you F up only a little bit and you get to 80%? You made 80 grand, Right? I used to always go to my dad. Dad, I need a hundred bucks. Man, boy, you out your mind. No, dad, dad, seriously, I need a hundred bucks. Actually, I think about it, I need like 150. He'd be like, man, take $50 out of my wallet and get the hell out of my house. I needed $10. Always. Always. Dad, I want a horse. What the hell do you want a horse for? I don't know. I was watching John Wayne, and then like he got a horse, and then one of my friends at school, they got a horse. They go every weekend and check out a horse. Like horses are really cool. And I think they even got like smaller ones that can fit in the backyard. Why can't you get a dog like any other normal kid? That's how I got my dog. Right? So if you shoot for the moon, shoot for the stars, that way when you mess up, you'll come down and you land on Mars. 
know what I'm saying? So if you know that your goal is to make, if you know your goal is to make 50, set your pricing structure around making 100, because then if you screw up, you'll still land at 75, 80, and you did gangster. So that's what Greg meant a long time about, about give yourself some room, right? Put that thought process into your dome, and let's get get going, right? <laughs> Say that is a true story, bro. As a Raiders fan, that hurts. <laughs> that hurts. Now, Renee, really, you're gonna touch this one, but this is true. Renee is telling the truth. At some point, you're gonna have to make some concessions. I know there's somebody right now bitching about not being able to pay 20 bucks a month for Chat GPT, and I bet you within a five minute conversation, I can find you twenty dollars or something you need to stop spending money on and go get you a Chat GPT Plus if it's going to help your business, right? So that's just obnoxious. <laughs> I oh, Renee, don't tell her I said this. I get this is super true. And I'm going to say this to my people. Never do I want to hear any one of you guys say, I can't do life math. Saying that you can't do math is telling your clients you don't know how to properly budget. Never profess your math inefficiency skills, ever. Because subconsciously, you're telling your client that you do not know how to do calculations. I tell my clients, I'm really good at math, <laughs> even though I'm not. I just say I'm really good at math, so that way they just know when I give them a number, that's the freaking number. I don't want them to question my numbers. So I never say that. I think it's a bad look. I told her before to stop saying that crap, but she don't listen to me. She hard hit it. <laughs> 2,000 hours a year for 25 bucks. There you go. Oh. Uh, yeah, oh, they, ooh, ooh, my God. I don't have the right button. I don't have the right button. That is, oh, oh. Here, let's hit it. DJ Doc Rock. DJ Doc Rock. Yes, this is a key point to this statement, a very key point to this statement. If you double your price, you will get less customers, but you will also do less work to have the same in run. Just run that through your brain again, right? If you are doing, if you're a $50 an hour person and you're charging $100 an hour and you chase away a bunch of $50 an hour clients, it's okay. The $100 an hour clients will get you to the same place for half the amount of output and you will be happier for it. You won't have creator burnout. I can't stand that word. I really can't stand that word. It just means you're not working on purpose. If you're working on purpose, nothing takes you away from your purpose. Nothing hurts. Nothing burns you out. Nothing burns you out. Sorry, Mo. I get I get excited. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, 5 a.m.? Sorry, Chantel. It's uh, 9 a.m. here, so <laughs> what can we do? What can we do? Sorry. Um. Anyway, so I just want to make sure that you guys know that I, I completely agree with the know your worth segment. That part is true. However, I think a lot of people say it and they really don't even actually know what it means. Right? So more than just know your worth. Know the market, know the actual market you're working in and where you fit. And don't be afraid to be like Apple, BMW, Louis Vuitton, Ritz Carlton, you know, companies that Adidas is not trying to compete with freaking Tom McCann. Are they still in business? I don't even know. Adidas ain't trying to compete with Tom McCann. Adidas is competing with Nike. Like Adidas don't even compete with their little brother Puma. Wait, which one was older, Rudolph or Adolphus? Did you guys know that Rudolph and Adolphus, Adidas and Puma, they're brothers? Anyway, uh, DJ said, this is 100% true. Clients that you're paying more for usually ask for less crap. Okay, so this is super funny. And here's how I got really, here's how I got really good at pricing. I'll tell you a little story. I was working with a client and they're a big client. And they had me doing a particular type of work for them in my fabrication business. I was making some stuff for them that 
the thing that I fabricated for them still exists in every one of their products to this very day. Every time I'm near one, I see it. I'm like, hey, I made that. Um, anyway, they had something that they had me making and rough cost for me was like, you know, $200 a piece for all of the ones I made. I made 185 of them. They said, we really liked the work. It was super dope. Um, but we're going to give you another batch. Can you do it? On the first batch, because I was so, I don't know any better words. I was so hard up to get them as a client because of who they are that I charged too little. I was working probably two times harder not wanting to F this up because of who they are. They're one of the biggest businesses in the state of Hawaii. In the country, actually. Um, and in order to not lose that particular job, I gave them a price that I knew they couldn't say no to. When I was doing the work, I was like, damn, son, you should have charged double for this. But that's okay. You're doing it for a lot, 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 right? When they came back the next year, and they wanted more. Not to mention the person that they had on their team that I had to work with was like Dylan said, can you do this? Can you do this? Can you do this? How's it going? How's it going? How's it going? I eventually had to tell that person, every time you call me, it takes 15 more minutes out of what I was doing. Why does it take 15 minutes? Because I got to answer. We talked for five. What I have to do requires so much accuracy I have to get my brain back into accuracy level. It's the kind of work that is extremely precise because of federal regulations. Everything has to be weighed and measured and it has to be perfect. It can't be off. There's no guesstimates. Everything is like, you can start to figure this out. There's a federal governing body that says that each one of these pieces must weigh exactly what it says it weighs. Right? Anyway. So in the process, I was like, every time you call me, you throw me behind the eight ball. Every time I got to stop and send you an email or a picture or some other update when it's just is waste time. So you need to trust in my process the way I trust in you to pay me. Oh, funny thing. When it came time to pay after the first project was done, 120 days. Why? Because they're such a big company. It has to go through all of these departments. 120 days. Okay. So when it came back the next time, I'm like, I can't do it. Why? We don't trust anybody else. Blah, 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 blah. I'm like, I can't do it. You take, you take a lot of my time. Um, I really love you guys. You guys are my favorite. This as your customer, I will never stop being your customer. You're one of my favorite brands in the planet. Like I live and breathe by your brand, but you take so much of my time and your team is a little bit difficult to work with. And when I'm doing this work for you, that means I don't have any output for anybody else. So here's what I need to do. Listen closely, family. I need to triple your rate. They're like, what? And I'm like, yes, each individual piece is going to cost 3x what you pay. For. So if the last piece was 100, now it's $300 a piece, right? So I didn't double the rate. I tripled the rate. I tripled the rate hoping they would go away because I didn't want to have a bad breakup, if you will because I really still want opportunities to do other projects for them, but there was no way I could take them because they were occupying like my entire fabrication business. And they were like, well, we can't pay that. I was like, okay. Um, they go, well, let me go look around and see who else can do it. So they disappeared for like two months. They checked every other person in the state that thinks they could do what I do. And they came back and they were like, Nobody does it the way you do it. Nobody does it at the quality that you do it. And I think we underpaid you the first time. We're willing to give you your triple rate. And I went F because I did, I didn't actually want the job, but now I got it and I got my triple rate and I finished the second batch for them and they're happy and I'm happy. And the people that get to see the product when they, you know, get into the thing, that's the thing. They all get to be like, oh, I know the guy who made that. That's my friend. Right. So sometimes how I figured out that I was underpricing myself was when I was doing more work than it needed to be and that they were actually willing to pay that 
And they also, I told them that you have got to get this in. And I know you're a big company and this is how I work. Tell them you need pre-budget because I need these invoices paid in 30 days. And they did it. They did it. That is the moral of that story. That's how I figured out that I was under pricing all the way. So know what you're going to do, right? Uh, decide where you want your brand to be. Ford and Tesla are the same kind of company. They build cars that get you from point A to point B, but they cater to two totally different audiences. Yep, Don, that was point number one. You got to know your audience. And this is where when you think your audience is everybody, you're absolutely screw yourself. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? This is where you absolutely screw yourself. So, um, yeah, I just wanted to put this out there for you guys. I hope this helped out. If, if we need to go deeper. If you need something more specific, please go into the comment section of this video after, you know, the live is over. Go into the comment section and be like, okay, I heard all of that. Here's what else I need to know. Oh, I did have one more thing that I wanted to put out to one of my friends. I think they know who I'm talking to. When you lose a nugget, right? Remember, you don't have to get that whole nugget back all at once. Sometimes it's actually better to have that whole nugget come back from five different acorn trees, right? Maybe you're changing your diet from a coconut and you're switching to acorn, but understand five acorns is probably actually better than one coconut because it's easy to steal one coconut. It's much harder to steal five acorns, right? So I, you might, I know you're trying to replace the coconut and you're trying to replace a rather large coconut, but it might be better. It might be time. And I'm not saying I'm right. I'm just saying, I think it might be better to switch from one big ass coconut to a bunch of small acorns and maybe a side of almonds and a couple of walnuts. And there might be less to maintain anyway. You might get your health back. You might get your freedom back. You might get your smile back. You might get your swagger back by dividing and conquer. And I, I can say that from experience. At one point, I was doing three things to equal what I was doing at Apple but I was happier. And now I'm still doing those three things. I kind of tripled what I was doing at Apple and I'm ecstatic. So maybe don't try, <laughs> don't try to grab the whole coconut back and you know, I love you. So call me and let's talk this out. Let's figure this out. And I know you know who it is. So I love you anyway. That's enough of that. Cause I'm gonna start crying because I care about this person. Renee, man, I, this might be hard and maybe you cannot say, if nothing else, just DM me, yes or no. Are you happier with what you're doing now than before? Like, are you really loving what you're doing at this moment in time? And you don't have to tell everybody, but I'm your friend. So DM me and tell me how things going for you. Cause I, I, I miss the amount of R2 videos <laughs> that would come through. But I know that what you're doing is for the greater good of the community. So my selfishness can forego wanting to see more of your, your uh, random humor, your random dry ass Canadian humor, <laughs> to knowing that you are helping a mass swath of people and it shows, okay? Because I love you, that's why. Get a tissue, damn it. <laughs> Yes, sir. Dang. Thank you, people. Man, oh, I know what I got to tell you guys. Hold on. One last thing before we go. Jay Nice, where the hell you been, mommy? What is up? All right. I like Jay Nice is my partner. She cool. All right. Let me show you this. Let me show you this. I get your butt into the Discord and RSVP SPCCA. If you don't, I'm going to be irritated. I got seven people out of like, 400 i got like seven people that said they want to come to this and all of y'all be saying oh i didn't know mac os could do that i didn't know Mac. i like i've been trying to tell you mac os can do all kind of things before you get good at what you're doing you got to upgrade your skills a famous guy once said that i think his name's 
is uh, Luis Pancetta Vega said, upgrade your skills. I'm trying to help you upgrade your skills. So in order to help you upgrade your skills, you need to go in and RSVP for this workshop. I'm doing this, this drop squad, all members level. So whether you are, are a, a, a silver member or a gold member or a bronze member, I don't know why I didn't do those in order, gold, silver, bronze. <laughs> you can come in and on the 25th, we're going to do a little like how to use Mac OS to upgrade your thing. Okay. Now, for those people that are not in the drop squad, Paul will give you links and I can see my bandwidth is going psycho. What the hang is going on here? Let me do something real quick. Let me try this. It's doing, it's doing stupid things. Sorry, I have this scene set to mute. Sorry, if you haven't already done so, um, yeah, jump over into the Discord. And God, the bandwidth is going psycho right now. Not now, I'm not, Paul. I can, I'm watching it. That was, oh, that was loud. Paul just said, him, you're muted in my ear. <laughs> oh my God. You still can't hear me, Paul? It should work. Can you hear? Oh, okay. Oh, <laughs> but okay, good. Paul, Paul says we're back. Okay, what's super funny is when you're over here in the Discord and Paul goes, you're muted in your ear. Like, it sounded like this. You're muted. <laughs> It was, it was kind of glorious. Anyway, jump over to the Discord. Make sure you signed up. Any membership is welcome. Uh, you're in there like swimwear. So, yes, I absolutely appreciate you guys. Make sure you come in. We're going to do this. Now, for anybody that's not in the Drop Squad or you're not in the Discord, at some point uh, after we do this and we get it all down, I will open this up to the public, but it won't be free. Like the Drop Squad members, they get it as part of their membership. Everybody else, they, yeah, I'm going to pay a little something. It won't be expensive. So, if uh, if you're interested, and you're not a Drop Squad member, but you want to, uh, you know, maybe get in there to the to the actual workshop, which will probably go off in March. Just send me a little reminder to let me know that you're down with that, so I can put you on the list. There you go. There you go. So make sure Drop Squad people make sure you RSVP. It is in there. Uh, thanks to Keely for. Uh, show me how to do these events. Uh, me Drop Squad members will be doing more events. Uh, this one is first. And then uh, I have another idea for something that I want to run through with you guys. And then after this, everybody who's in uh, Drop Squad right now, you know, again, gold, silver, bronze, no matter. Jump on over to the after show. The after show is popping off in the Discord. And then we are going to, and Gretchen said it again. Drop Squad is worth every penny. It's all capitals, lady. Oh my God! This the the Hamchego. Oh man, Luis, why you gotta bring up old sh like Ham and Manchego from the office in Boston is so freaking good. I'll be having one in April. Anyway, gang, I hope you guys got something out of this pricing conversation before the bandwidth absolutely kills us. I'm gonna dip head over to the after party. I see Aubrey and Paul have already slid into the Discord. All the rest of you guys that want to come in, let's come in. We're going to after party for a little bit, and then I will see you on Tuesday. Again, if you have any follow-up questions about pricing or you're just absolutely stuck, you got two options. Leave a comment down in this video when it stops, or if you really need to sit down, sit down. Come over, go to createbetter.life, book yourself an appointment, and I will sit with you, and I will help you figure this thing out. Okay? All right, cool. Cool. Uh, yes, gold membership has a requirement. True story, Paul. 
All right, let me full screen say I love you, even though my bandwidth is going to go crazy. And I'm going to quickly press the hangout button, and then I'll see you guys Tuesday. Love you. Mean it. Bye.